Dear university community, so in today's uh, information hour, we would like to give an overview of the budget for the next year. So we'll also talk about how this uh, budget is going to be drafted. But first of all, we shall focus on what is new in the budget next year. These are the funds. And uh, so it's four of us in the uh, council hall. We have Maria Kurusma, Prorector Sven Illing, and Prorector Henrik Boyle. So if we talk about the uh, budget for 2022, then uh, everything is uh, going as usual. We started in October with the negotiations between the rector's office and the dean's office. Our financing department has done a great deal of work in order to make sure that all the aspects of it uh, are in order. So we have the draft budget, and uh, yesterday we discussed it in the academic committee. So tomorrow and Thursday, on the 9th of December, we're going to have the discussion held in the uh, uh, Senate. And in uh, uh, accordance with the statutes of the university, the Senate is going to present the uh, draft uh, budget to the uh, University Council for the approval. So this is going to be held um, a little over a week on December 17. And in accordance with the plans made, uh, the Council should approve this budget for the next year. So. Um, as I said, we'll discuss the uh, new things and what are the biggest changes if we look at the budget for the next year. So uh, we have these uh, new funds uh, which are being established now. So if we're going to discuss funds, so let's look at the images as well. So uh, today we are going to look at uh, three funds. So we have the grant fund, the volume of which is 2.1 million euros. Let's look at the next slide. So it's 2.1 million euros, which is uh, in turn being divided into two parts. We have the junior researcher uh, grant, 1.8 million euros, and the second part is the proof of concept grant, which is divided into two uh, as well in turn. I'm not going to list these figures here. Uh, Maria, Sven and Henrik will discuss these in further detail. And then we have the uh, academic development and uh, third is the uh, project fund for the strategic plan implementation plan. So the difference between the first two and the third is that the third fund is a single time fund. So that means it's going to be financed from the balance of the previous year's projects. So this is the reserve fund. So the aim here is to support our strategic plan objectives. As you know, we have a new and very ambitious strategic plan which the Council approved in February this year. So we have uh, 16 key indicators which are linked to it. And uh, there is an implementation plan which is linked to this strategic plan, and I'm going to come back to this later. So now I would like to give the floor to Maria. And so if you could uh, discuss a little bit further uh, what we can look forward to when it comes to the Junior Research Grant. Thank you very much indeed. When it comes to the Junior Research Grant uh, Fund, it's our initiative in the Rector's Office in order to support the next generation of researchers and to support their initiatives. So that means that they can apply for funds actively themselves. And they would also gain experience while doing it, how this application process works. We all recall our first grant applications. I don't know if you, Teet, can remember it, definitely. Do you remember the first rejection? Definitely. Did you cry? 
No, I did not cry, but I remember I went home and I watched a James Bond movie and I was sad. I actually cried. But that was such a long time ago. Now I don't even cry about these things anymore. I'm just used to it that every now and then you get a rejection. But it is an unfortunate situation. It's a bad first experience that you have dedicated a lot of time that you think that it's a great idea and then the finances do not value it at all or value it and they say, yes, indeed, it was a good idea, but we don't have money for it. And uh, then you have to apply uh, time and again and it hurts. Now, in addition to that, uh, young researchers have some existential issues as well because we know that uh, in Estonia and the statistics of the rest of the world, that when it comes to the academic world, then the most um, vulnerable time for research uh, or scientist is uh, after your uh, postdoc, when you really have to start um, building yourself up as an independent scientist, as an independent researcher. So that means you have to find out how to apply for your own financing. And we have to say that our doctorate studies do not really prepare us for this harsh facts of life. And when it comes to the grant fund, the point of it is that it's going to function as a risk alleviation measure. So the uh, point itself is uh, simple, because if you have a researcher who has applied uh, for a research grant and who has received a positive review, then most of the uh, measures of the project's approval is uh, threshold-based. So once you've crossed the threshold, then it can be financed, but usually money first runs out. So we are going to check if uh, the reviewers have given a positive assessment if it crosses the threshold. And if the review is positive, then we give uh, the bridge grant to the young researcher. Uh, it's 55,000 euros, saying that, yes, you're very good that you applied. Here are some funds for you to survive this year, but the condition is that you're going to apply again. So this is how we can offer a bridge for one researcher once a year. And of course, they would uh, like them to apply for more than with one project every year, but the point of the bridge grant is that the researcher to survive that year. So that means it's possible for them to gain more experience, how exactly this uh, amplification system works. And it's a risk um, guarantee in the funds, but we also offer soft guarantees uh, so that the, uh, the research administration office is going to uh, offer guidance and consultation how to do it better, how to apply for funds better. So when it comes to this grant, as it is with any other funds, we're going to talk about the uh, early on next year when these uh, rules uh, will come into force. So we are going to uh, calculate our grant uh, life cycle uh, from next year of, as of 1st of January. It is very important to uh, remember for all the young uh, researchers that if you apply for a grant, uh, then it has to be a grant uh, application which has been registered uh, by the university. Every researcher has to do it anyway. You apply for funds so that the university is aware of your application process. But we are going to uh, count the grant period from that moment onwards. And what this uh, research has to do, they don't really have to do anything because the university already has a knowledge and is aware of the grant application. And uh, they, uh, we will also know which ones have been approved and which ones have not been approved. So we'll contact the research ourselves. Maria, if I, I have a question, if I may. Yes, indeed. I would encourage all the people listening and watching us uh, that if you have any questions, please uh, put it down in the chat window. So this is going to be an interactive presentation. So if you have any questions, please submit them in the chat window. And uh, I will check once again. If I'm a young researcher, and if I've watched already this uh, James Bond movie and I've gotten over it, I go and apply again. And next time I don't get this uh, grant either. So I can wait until the uh, 
uh, department contacts me or the research administration office contacts me. Yes, indeed, you can watch the film. You'll be contacted. So uh, I do not see any questions in the chat window right now, so we shall continue with the proof of concept grants. Sven, so what do we have of interest there? So yes, indeed, in uh, the uh, uh, strategic plan, we have an objective that from the University of Technology, we should have more technology companies um, coming from here. So right now, when it comes to the spin-offs, then uh, we have 14 companies listed, which have uh, arisen from the University of Technology. And our objective is that per year we would have uh, quite many companies. So we looked at some of the other universities, how they have uh, supported their entrepre- enterprising uh, researchers, including uh, young researchers. So, who say that they would like to take the uh, um, research uh, results to business and uh, start a next escalatron. So, as it is with the young researchers who need the support, we need also support in order to move uh, towards commercialization with your idea and to start your own business. Or we will help you to find a team so that this um, researcher will not leave the university. But they have a passive uh, participation and uh, the research technology is going to be applied in this company. So we looked at the experiences of other universities, for example, Uh, We have uh, ETH uh, Zurich, which is a high level. So they are, um, they have about 30 companies per year, many UK universities as well on the same level. But we know that Eurotech uh, universities are very successful. We have a lot to learn from them. So, for example, in uh, EPPL, they have uh, similar grants already in place as, um, well, ETH Zurich as well, although they are not Eurotech. So the same is true for many other universities. So when it comes to this um, grant scheme, then we uh, follow the example of uh, the uh, University of Technology of Denmark. And universities often have two grants. So uh, there is a a grant for uh, support of commercialization. One grant is up to 10,000. So, uh, and the technology transfer unit uh, can uh, very quickly allocate to the team of scientists. And then you you can uh, get um, the consultation, tests, analysis carried out also by the university and maybe also build a prototype. And the second grant, uh, so proof of concept uh, is uh, divided into two. Uh, The starting grant was up to 10,000. And then this uh, bigger grant uh, is a commercialization grant. And application for this grant happens twice a year, up to 75 uh, euros. So, uh, in principle, it's the same thing to make sure that this scientific result will uh, get closer to the market and we'd like to be as flexible as possible. So, at least it is possible to apply for uh, whatever you want to apply, including also the salaries of your team and uh, also uh, getting some services from outside. So if the committee approves, then this is possible. And when it comes to the intellectual property, then it belongs to the university. But the objective here is that if you are starting a company, 
uh, then the university will uh, transfer this intellectual property to the company for a small share. We have thought about 5 to 9 percent. And or there is going to be licensing agreement on quite favorable uh, conditions because uh, our objective really is to make sure that the research uh, outcome reaches the uh, society and uh, having shares or licensing fee is there to make sure that the uh, uh, next programs in the future can be financed so to make sure this is all sustainable and uh, we will not have this kind of uni- understanding in the university that it um, comes at the expense of somebody's um, research or uh, teaching activity. Because um, across the world, um, universities uh, have a very high demand set on them when it comes to uh, transferring the outcomes of research to business. So this is something which the uh, society is looking forward to. So I believe that um, due to the proof of concept grant, we can offer support to the researchers who would like to take uh, these uh, research outcome to the businesses, either themselves or through the partners. So there are no questions. Uh, Maria, you had a question. Now, I can see that in the chat window, people are saying that the sound quality is very poor, so that they can't hear very well. Okay, I'll try to speak up a bit. Do you have a good uh, role model or example how we can move forward when it comes to the proof of concept grant? Yes, indeed. Uh, This autumn we uh, started with a training and mentoring program for our researchers and we had uh, 20 ideas and teams who applied to join this program. Every second week we have uh, carried out uh, trainings and uh, mentoring sessions and it seems to me that this um, shows us that uh, the university does have these uh, ideas in place and we can offer more support. And another example, when it it comes to the Technical University of Denmark, then they summed up um, the uh, outcome of uh, the last five years when, as they have issued they, proof of concept grants, uh, which have been in the amount of 5 million euros, 99 grants total. And uh, the outcome has been incredible because uh, already they have established 38 enterprises and uh, 24 are in the process of being established. So two-thirds of the recipients of the grant have moved on and actually established their own companies. So these are very encouraging results. Thank you. Okay, looks like we can move on. So let us uh, move on to the next uh, fund, which is the Teaching Excellence Fund. Let's look at the next slide as well. So we're going to talk about uh, the uh, Teaching Excellence Fund. Why do we need it? Why these amounts? So I'd like to uh, remind you that maybe if you're not familiar with it, uh, then uh, in the financial rules before we had uh, allocations based on decisions, both for administration and support and the academic uh, side of the university as well. And you could apply for these funds for different uh, projects. And the volume of uh, Teaching Excellence uh, project um, has been more or less the same amount. 
And in the new financial uh, financial rules, we do not have this kind of decision-based funding anymore. So to just to make sure that teaching excellence uh, will not be left aside, then we created this teaching excellence uh, fund uh, of 2.1 million. So uh, it includes three pillars. Uh, first one is uh, these uh, projects which fulfill uh, the uh, administrative agreement and implementation plan objectives. Um, when it comes to the administrative agreement, uh, then one of the biggest teaching excellent projects uh, or the biggest contract is the um, support for uh, higher uh, education activities. It's not just a lump sum, but it includes very uh, clear objectives. So these objectives have to be fulfilled. So the most recent administrative agreement report we compiled uh, included 48 pages for every activity. We could have actually written 480 pages. But this is an example of um, of the activities we need to carry out uh, on the basis of the higher uh, education uh, program. So. Um, this pillar next year is going to be 460,000 euros. And I'm going to list uh, more specific activities which we're going to finance. So we finance the uh, new activity uh, which we have uh, included. Uh, so this is the pedagogical uh, level improvement through the didactic center. So this is something we would like to support and the we will cover half of the staff cost of the didactic center. So there is also funding for the faculty members training. So the didactics center um, work on uh, different uh, uh, research level or different uh, department levels, but uh, this is something we need to fund as well. So the activities uh, which are continued with the uh, uh, talented young people through the Olympiades uh, programs, and we have been applying uh, uh, for uh, a correct and just approach so that the ministry would uh, support uh, the University of Technology in the same amount as they support the University of Tartu because they get one million, we get a lot less. And as long as we have not been able to get this funding from the ministry, then you can agree that this is the activity which should still be ongoing at the university. So. Uh, we have allocated uh, 50,000 euros from the Teaching Excellence Fund. We know how hard it is to get access to good students, and we know how uh, tough the competition is to get the best students here. And I would repeat these figures again. So who are our potential students uh, who are graduating from the, from the gymnasium? So this year, who have uh, taken the extended maths for up to uh, uh, we have limited um, uh, number of people who are taking extended math and Estonian. Uh, language skills are important as well. So taking this into account, um, who are graduating and who can come to join us, we the number is roughly 1,800. And uh, there's competition also from foreign universities and other Estonian universities. So that means we have to make a lot of effort to get the best people. And we have um, been contributing a great deal towards these activities so that uh, we are providing uh, uh, research assistance for a gymnasium, also the optional classes, optional lessons. And I would like to recognize the uh, uh, the teaching staff who has been doing this work um, because this is an additional work for the staff. And I think this is something which is worth uh, recognition. So there is a Eurotech uh, own financing as well. I'm going to cover the Eurotech project a little bit later. And uh, this is uh, definitely one of the important uh, points uh, and the most important 
Um, and the previous uh, strategic plan uh, looked at the uh, remote learning, e-learning program. So we had the ambition so that all the compulsory uh, subjects will be covered with e-support. And during this strategic plan, we would like to take another step forward. And this is now a voluntary basis, but I would like to um, motivate and promote and recognize um, all the uh, uh, teaching staff to take this uh, e-learning to another level. So that means that we have a little bit of a motivational package for them as well. And now I would move on uh, to the second pillar, which is the financing uh, which is uh, even more important for the uh, teaching staff because uh, all the uh, departments and uh, staff can apply. So I would uh, like to divide this into two parts because we have um, some of the initiatives which are the uh, initiatives of the Vice, uh, Vice Rector of Academic Affairs, uh, which is top down. And then we have the other one, which is based on study areas, which is bottom up. So first of all, the Vice Rector of Academic Affairs initiatives can be divided into three parts. So one is Eurotech um, uh, cooperation promotion. So this is something we definitely need to support because uh, Eurotech uh, Corporation is um, uh, is bearing its first fruits and this is the information which perhaps uh, not reached uh, uh, everybody at among the teaching staff because the first success story we can talk is the n mobility numbers because Eurotech ambition is that 25 percent of, of the students of all the Eurotech students will participate in the mobility program because physical Physical mobility, as we know, um, at the moment um, uh, is not really possible, but we have started with virtual mobility. And by next spring semester, we have uh, 81 students from uh, top level partners. Uh, so it's 81 students who will join us remotely because I do not think we have had so many um, before. So this is an, a great thing. But when it comes to Eurotech, then we have many different options for corporations. The ambitions are great. And uh, all the other countries which have the partner universities uh, are supporting these activities financially. Estonia is the only country which has not considered it important enough, but we hope that our government also will notice it and will fix it. But as long as it's not done, uh, we would like to be equal partners to our partners. So that means we have to find these means in order to be competitive and uh, Euro in order to favor Eurotech uh, cooperation, we have a uh, plan for 240,000 euros. It's a dynamic funding. We have provisionally uh, taken down the activities which we finance and um, there are quite many. And so that means that we're looking at all the departments and it's, uh, we are um, introducing what's going to be financed and how. And so if you go to the Eurotech uh, page on our website, then the information is there. So the second uh, topic of uh, uh, financing uh, is uh, the uh, academic staff uh, teaching excellence. Uh, so this is uh, 50,000 euros. So we are going to allocate uh, 10,000 um, euros to five people, and but we are hoping to be flexible here as well. So this is meant for people who contribute uh, daily into the teaching work and who has uh, who have ambition to uh, share their experiences wider, so outside the department. So uh, when we looked at it at the uh, teaching um, the committee, uh, then uh, so if you look at the Academic Affairs Committee decision-making, because if you have a good staff member who's called Mari, for example, and who feels uh, responsible for the good quality of teaching and would like to uh, mentor new uh, teachers, uh, then this is something we'd like to support. Or if you uh, would like to share your teaching uh, competence across the university and outside the working hours or maybe during the working hours, organize some events, and this is something we're going to support. Or 
If you want to uh, carry out your own research on teaching methods, then this is also welcome. And then the um, third box here, which is the uh, uh, promotion support for teaching excellence, it's 100,000 euros. So uh, every year we're going to uh, cover one subject. So this is covered by the uh, Vice Director of Academic Affairs. And then we are looking for the applications on this subject. And the subject for next year is uh, problem and project learning uh, promotion. So the problem and project learning is in our strategic plan and implementation plan as a priority. So uh, we are uh, trying to make it more practical. So it's a science-based but practical approach. So we have many uh, problems um, Uh, problem and uh, project learning uh, programs already, but we want to improve them. So, so here we uh, have the uh, welcoming applications for, let's say, 10,000, 20,000 euros. And the last um, uh, pillar is uh, the department uh, teaching uh, excellence projects. So this is the uh, bottom-up approach. So this is fairly blank sheet, and we're welcoming the... Uh, applications which are interdisciplinary uh, ac across different fields, across different departments and uh, programs. And here we have listed also these topics um, which we would like to support, but we would not like to limit your uh, imagination here because all the fields which have to do with teaching, a good level of teaching, Um, also supporting green transition, so they are all welcome. And uh, this fund has not been introduced much, but uh, people have already uh, uh, talked to me and uh, have offered up their very good ideas, so I know that departments do have ideas. And this is a possibility to implement these ideas. So financing here for next year is 350,000 euros. So we're looking for about 50,000 euro applications. And to conclude, so uh, the application process, uh, who is going to make the decisions uh, or uh, which team is going to make the decisions, and then when it comes to the decision making, then the plan is... Uh, Or rather, we will have we will include the academic affairs committee, and based on the current vision, then the decision will come uh, once we see the white rise, uh, smoke rising from the academic affairs committee. I can see you. We also have some questions. So we we uh, have the budget of less than 10% percent uh, for the teaching activities. Let's talk about figures as well, because the budget for next year is 125 million euros, a little bit over, out of which. Uh, The uh, plan is that 41.7 million is for the uh, higher education activities, so about half of the total budget. No, actually, if we look at the budget for next year, so uh, financing for teaching is uh, over half because uh, we have the... Uh, activities uh, for this under Estonian higher education strategy because then we have uh, all the uh, service fees, um, teaching fees, so it's 18 million which uh, comes from uh, um, which are all the grants and the uh, study projects. So, so to say that the teaching is 10% of the total budget, this is not true because the uh, This field is over 50% of the total budget. Hendrik, I can see there's a question for you. So this is from Viru, uh, Viruma College. So regarding for the teaching excellence funds for academic staff, so we, we are uh, the preference is given to the associate professors outside the tenure track. 
This is a very good uh, commission, uh, question because we talked about it in the Academic Affairs Committee as well. And the material you read was the uh, information for the Academic Affairs Committee. And during the committee, we removed this clause because everybody can apply. And if we have the associate professors who are better, then they just get this money. But everybody will get equal opportunities. So the lecturers, senior lecturers, uh, tenured professors, and even good researchers can apply. It's important to have a good quality project. So this clause uh, has been removed. Then this question about the grant fund because we have uh, talked about the age, so uh, how many years I can watch the Bond film and be sad. Yes, indeed, we are looking at the young or junior researchers uh, with uh, no more than 10 years after they defended their thesis. We add also uh, the time if they've been on parental leave or they've been conscripted to the army. So, uh, so up to 10 years after they receive the degree, so not that young. So, so you're not that young 10 years after you received your degree. Thank you very much. I do not see any further. There's another question about um, entrepreneurship. Sven, uh, this is about the entrepreneurship. Yes, indeed, because the question is that uh, can the entrepreneurship office, uh, uh, will the entrepreneurship um, uh, office uh, receive this application if we're going to have a deep technology startup course for master degree students, 10 lectures, guest speakers, talking about academic career models, uh, deep technology development, industrial career models, and um, startup career models. So the answer is no, because the proof of concept grant is for the commercialization of a research outcome in order to um, get to the licensing to a startup company or uh, to the sale of technology. So, but, I really like this project. So I think Henrik will be happy to take it because Henrik has a lot of money. Well, uh, the uh, Academic Affairs Committee will decide over my wallet. So I can't really tell you because when it comes to, well, I'm the chair of the Academic Affairs Committee, says Maria. Yes, indeed. Um, I think it's a very interesting project, and personally, I would uh, support the submission of this um, project under the Teaching Excellent Projects. It's interdisciplinary, and if other uh, departments are also willing to support it, then I think it's a very good um, possibility. This cooperation and interdisciplinary approach is uh, the main idea of the Teaching Excellence Fund, because we often have many good ideas, but they, because they're interdisciplinary in nature, then this is the uh, obstacle. So who is going to contribute and how? So that's the point that the wide-based good ideas will get support and will not be left undone. Now we have another follow-up question here How about this 10%. Yes, I understand what's being said because in one institute, um, the financing relating to teaching work is uh, 10%. Yes, indeed, um, it depends on the institute. Um, if sometimes in some places there is less of the teaching work, but this is um, the uh, financial uh, rules and the principles we need to follow. So how is the uh, budgeting structure put into place? So that means that we will transfer funds uh, to the institutes from the general funds. And uh, this is a very important tip topic which is going to be discussed now. And I suppose it's going to be uh, discussed um, after the 6th of January as well in the second stage discussions. So how exactly this budget is being developed on the institute level, because right now it, it could be that it is small for certain institutes, uh, because it could be sometimes uh, some of the funds which come through the dean's office which have not been taken into account. But it's an important topic This is going to be discussed. Uh, 
Let's see if there are any further questions. Mara says, thank you. And uh, let us uh, move on to the uh, last part. Uh, so, so I'm going to discuss the implementation plan uh, project fund. So it uh, has a little bit different basis because it's a, a single uh, one-time fund. It's going to be uh, financed from the administrative and uh, support structure departure, uh, department's uh, um, balance, uh, which has been uh, uh, included in the reserve fund for the rector's office. So this is 3 million euros, which you can use. And the objective is... Uh, because we have, uh, we need to uh, implement our strategic plan, and you have to understand that if you have a strategic plan, and we have the key indicators, and it's going to be implemented implemented over five uh, um, years, so then you need to have the implementation plan as well. So the idea of the implementation plan fund is uh, to. Uh, uh, implement the ideas which are included in the strategic plan. So this is the uh, covers the uh, university as a whole, looking at the improving of the image on the international level, our partners, um, staff, uh, employers, uh, society at large, external partners, students. So um, these projects um, can be found uh, in the smart environment. And this uh, smart environment, we had a recent um, institutional um, accreditation, and the committee members um, uh, did mention that, that these links are very good uh, because they're about, includes about 50 projects, which cover different fields. Um, so uh, providing services to the site, uh, to the society, also teaching, uh, um, research, and so forth. So one uh, project is the uh, the strategy for the internalization internationalization of the university, which is very important. We talk about um, Eurotech already, but um, I'm mentioning the accreditation which just took place. So one of the uh, comments um, was uh, the concern that uh, not many of the our students are participating in exchange programs. So one project is uh, how exactly we would approach uh, this on the university level. This is a project where you can apply uh, funding from the uh, Strategic Plan Implementation Fund. So um, we do not have agreements yet for these projects, but there's going to be order of the rector. There's a draft being developed right now. And this is kind of similar to the um, um, draft budget um, system. It's going to go to the uh, Senate tomorrow. Discussions are going to be uh, held, and if everything is uh, going to go according to plan, then this is going to go to the council, and the council will approve the budget on the 17th of December. And then a rector uh, can also sign this order and um, we can start uh, with the application process. Yes, indeed. Important is to talk about transparency as well. Uh, so these uh, projects are all accessible. Uh, the order will be accessible on the website of our legal documents. And to conclude, uh, this is a single fund right now because we are using up the reserves of uh, previous years. So, of course, uh, we should be putting this in uh, towards our uh, strategic aims. And uh, to conclude, a little bit about the deadlines as well. So, if everything goes, goes to plan, then on uh, December 17, that's the 
date when uh, the uh, Council can approve of the budget for next year. And as of uh, January, it will be possible to uh, send in applications. So uh, our young uh, researchers do not really have to worry because they'll be contacted, Maria. Yes, indeed, uh, they will be contacted. There are two questions. Uh, where the grant deadlines will be published and uh, is there going to be a certain form used? I do not have deadlines, no forms. So you don't really have to worry about it because if it comes to this research grant, you don't have to worry at all because uh, uh, we will uh, contact you. Uh, if uh, your application was rejected. Uh, but I think uh, that when it comes to the forms, the question is for you. Yes, indeed, there is a simple form. We have uh, developed an initial form and we are uh, reviewing it and you can find it on the website. And when it comes to deadlines, uh, they will be also on the website. And this is where they're going to be published. Uh, there is another question here. Uh, when it comes to the proof of concept uh, grant, uh, can the uh, outcome be a freeware which is not going to gain a license fee, but it uh, brings in recognition and maybe future projects? So this is a very interesting question. So my opinion is that, yes, indeed, uh, this is something we should consider because if we talk about freeware solutions, then we know that there are plenty of uh, business models built on freeware and there are some very large companies as well. And when it comes to the recognition of fame for the university, this is also our in our strategic plan. We want to increase our international recognition and reputation. So this is definitely included. So the answer is yes. And uh, it's competition-based. In the Technical University of Denmark, uh, uh, then uh, they have a fierce competition for these grants. So um, we will see um, how busy it's going to be, how many applications we're going to get. But it's often, oh, of course, a very good idea to come and uh, submit your application. And thank you for this uh, new interesting approach. Uh, there is another question for the Young Researcher Grant. What is the uh, basis for the uh, uh, grant decision? Uh, are you going to take into account the reviewer's opinion or the threshold? Uh, we are going to look at the final uh, evaluation. Did you pass the threshold or not? So, because it's threshold-based financing, and uh, definitely uh, we will uh, check the reviews, um, uh, but, but we cannot really uh, get into details whether the review has made a mistake because we do not have enough resource in the house. We will never find out the final truth things are as they are. But if we were to speculate a little bit, then I think that this question here concerns uh, the uh, grants of the Estonia Research Council because sometimes people have said that they've received a fair review or an unfair review uh, and uh, one of the aims, aims is uh, to uh, help the young researchers to look a little bit wider because the Estonia Research Council is not the only place. You can go to the horizon, you can go to the structural funds, uh, you can apply in many different places. And the fact mistakes, factor errors are made. Sometimes reviewers are not the smartest. And the point of the grant fund is that this is going to be a bridge for the risks which happen due to the fact that the reviewer maybe has not been the best. And this is what happens as well. Let's see if there are any other questions. Because 
So uh, people who applied for a grant uh, in 2021 from Estonia Research Council, can they receive the Young Research Grant in 2022? Unfortunately not, because we have to draw a line somewhere, and this is uh, 1st of January. Uh, 2022. So the grant applications which have been uh, registered as of 1st of January 2022. So if you're going to apply for the Research Council next year and you've crossed the threshold but you did not get receive the financing, then you can use this grant fund. But we have to draw the line somewhere from which date onwards applications can be sent in uh, or how far back we go and the deadline is have, um, we're going to do it as of 1st of January 2022. There's another question here. Why is the uh, grant fund only for young researchers? Is this ageism, age-related discrimination? Well, it's uh, for uh, younger researchers because all the research agencies have the uh, support for young people and the fact that we support the young people is not the discrimination of the uh, older people but I think the question here is wider because during the previous rector's office in the university we started the tenure reform and the initial uh, idea was that we'll have strong research teams who are gathered around tenured professors and the tenured professors should receive funding and during their previous uh, rector's office it was uh, determined to be 50,000 euros. So this is the funds which can uh, be, the use of which can be determined by the tenured profession, professor and uh, the uh, aim is to create the sense of security. So the question is that uh, whether the tenure reform has been carried out fully, that's a completely different question because um, I think this doesn't really work well yet, uh, but uh, this is the basis where the, and based on this, the older researchers are in a much uh, better situation because they get 50,000 yearly, regardless whether they uh, apply for funds or not. And of course, the tenured professor needs to apply for funds all the time. So these are not the restrictions we're going to establish anymore. And I think that the older researchers um, are in a much better situation com in comparison to the young researchers because they have experience, they have their networks, they have the research teams who are already working and they help them to apply for funding. And if they do not have that, then maybe the, the researcher has not been able to establish themselves. So this grant fund is really aimed for uh, younger researchers so they would uh, learn the rules of the game. So once they reach the um, tenure or the tenure track, so they would not uh, be worried about the rejection of applications because this happens all the time. Thank you. There is another question. So this is an administrative agreement and the obligations established in the administrative um, agreement, whether it's balanced approach. Of course, we all know it's not because um, activity uh, support, if we talk about this uh, 40 million then uh, it's gone up 10%, little under 10%, but the, um, the revenue of the state has increased by 30%. But in administrative agreement, uh, so this um, education strategy uh, says that the state is going to increase their financing according to the consumer index, and that has not happened either. So uh, if you look at the education strategy, then uh, the discussions are being held in the society and the University's Estonia Council has uh, started uh, a project uh, which is uh, the uh, financing of the uh, higher education until uh, the uh, elections. There are many arguments uh, being discussed and next uh, year, although we have had many uh, meetings with the politicians and the parties, 
But um, I'm not going to get into detail right now, but the main points uh, which the universities say, as uh, Fyodor Sergeyev here says, that the state does not uh, fulfill their obligations, so they are not going to be, uh, they are not financing the universities in according to the requirements. There's different figures. For example, the deficit is about 100 million euros, which has accumulated across universities over a six-year period. And the second is that the uh, national budget expense on education has gone down uh, from 1.5% uh, of GDP to 1.1% over the last six-year uh, period. But this is a debate we uh, need to hold. So. Um, as far as I understand, uh, and the uh, understanding of all the other university directors is that we understand the problem, because a couple of years ago we did not really understand what the problem is, that the government said that, well, you got the money, because once the uh, tuition fee uh, system uh, disappeared, because yes, indeed, we got the money, but they're, they're compensated for the loss of tuition. But times have moved on, and uh, things are a lot more expensive now. And the state financing has been frozen. And this is a very important problem. So uh, this is the answer to this uh, question that is uh, no, but, but it needs to be uh, resolved at least uh, during the next year, year and a half, uh, when the uh, uh, parliamentary elections will take place. And the uh, aim of the universities is to make sure that this topic will be uh, discussed over the next six months until the uh, parties are going to develop the election platforms. So a serious threat we can see is that uh, we uh, see danger to the higher education in Estonia, that we cannot offer free higher education in the Estonian language anymore. So their contribution needs to be made according to the need. Uh, yes, indeed, um, uh, the rector mentioned 100 million. Uh, this is what was uh, promised after the higher education reform, our share is about 25 percent, so the 20, uh, 25 million out of 100 million is what uh, we uh, are lacking. And this is also the reason why uh, we have been quite conservative when it comes to many uh, uh, larger teaching excellence projects because uh, they, all these things are interlinked. But um, indeed, this uh, topic uh, uh, is con uh, causing more and more concern, especially for small universities, because it has become already so painful that tomorrow, uh, December 9th, we are holding event uh, to increase the support for higher education. This is done through the professional associations and uh, smaller universities. So this is going, the event is going to be held at Dompia. So uh, Fyodor, you know that we are short of money, and I gave you a certain amount, so hopefully that answers your question. And this event tomorrow, uh, tomorrow 10 a.m., uh, there is uh, discussion held in the Grand Hall of the Parliament, uh, which is an important national discussion, and is going to do, discuss the higher education and higher education funding in the future. So uh, please uh, watch this debate, and it gives us an understanding how exactly our representatives uh, see this situation and what is uh, their understanding when it comes to our higher education. But um, time is up. So thank you all. Uh, thank you for your questions. And uh, I hope you will be all very active uh, and sending applications to these funds once they are approved. And holidays are coming up, so happy holidays. Thank you.